Otep. I am Evil J. I'm the bass player for the band Otep. My name is Rob Patterson. Um, I play guitar for the band Otep. <laughs> Intellectual. Master of words. Artistic. This is unbelievable. Vulnerability as well as a strength. Oh my God. Listen to her lyrics. She's deep. Flat out. My first met her, I thought Satan was in the room when she was growling. <laughs> I was just like blown away by it. She scared the shit out of me. Otep with the abilities to go extremely heavy to the quiet, poetic self. You know, I come from poverty and violence. My lyrics are reflections of my own personal observations and experiences. Um, when I write, I, I kind of, I'm sort of a slave to the muse, you know. Um, it's, it's so very subconscious with me. It comes out of a very private voice that I, I think is sometimes even separate from my own conscious awareness of it. I think uh, a lot of the lyrics sometimes start off as poems and, and then evolve into songs later. For me, uh, art is my god, music is my religion, and creation is how I manifest that. very lucky in that everyone uh, is a writer, everyone is creative, everyone brings something to the table. Uh, Rob, Rob brings something really remarkable to the band as far as playing. He was sort of the missing piece that we needed for our, our puzzle. He's also a phenomenal writer and uh, brings so much diversity with his guitar playing. I've been playing for about 16 years. I like to experiment with sounds and I have a guitar synth set up. So some of the songs have, you know, sitar sounds. And I don't just like straight metal. I would say I have a very heavy sound. The illest drummer alive. <laughs> He has so many different influences from, you know, death metal to jazz fusion to hip hop. I combined it all instead of just playing the average straight ahead drumming for each kind of music individually. So for speed metal, I wouldn't just play speed metal. I would mix up with fusion versus speed metal. It's not just playing a million miles an hour and just driving two, four beats. That's what kind of makes me different. Evil J is absolutely uh, a, one of the most creative people that I've ever known. I played piano for nine years. Six years in a death metal band gave me a good idea of what directions to go in. The caliber of musicianship is a lot higher. I want the bar to be raised. Let's do an eight hand tap. That's my main goal to make sure that I can make someone experience every emotion possible. And with her help and the rest of the guys, Rob and Moke, so far so good. These, you know, I couldn't ask to be with a better bunch of musicians. They stimulate me, they bring out the best parts of me, and I think I do with them as well. And that's what I think, you know, is so great about this band is that everyone comes from different backgrounds, everyone comes from different genres of music and different lifestyles, but we come together under one banner of authenticity and creativity and a hunger for something real. We were offered Ozfest by Sharon herself. It was overwhelming, but it, it, it validated so many things for us that we were doing the right thing, that we were following the right path. Um, it was like we were going to war every day. We would get on stage and uh, no one would even know who we were. 
And by the end of the set, they were chanting our name, they were bleeding, they were sweating, they were filthy, and they were absolutely enthralled in ecstasy. <laughs> That's something that we are desperately hungry for, is to play. And that's where you know, our fans have been a big, big part. I don't think that we'd be where we are without, without their belief in us. These types of people who are just as hungry for the things that we're hungry for, philosophically, spiritually, culturally, sociologically. You see me on stage, I see you on the floor, I talk to you after the show. I, I... You know, there, there needs to be more interaction because music is an extremely personal, personal thing. We had about two months to um, write an entire album. And we, we did it, we stayed, we worked really hard. We came to defy, you live and life is a lie. We embryonic satellites need our freedom to fly. This unit seems to have like a, like a, almost like a telekinesis thing as far as when we're writing. We're all on the same page. The timing, the feel, is just dead on. Play against, play odd timing, and you know to come back, and they're right there in the pocket waiting for you. If I like, write something, I don't have to like explain it to them. They just automatically know what I'm doing and they start playing along. Um, in order for us to do what we do effectively, uh, we have to sort of regress into ourselves, shed our skin of everything that everyone tells us we're supposed to be and how we're supposed to act, what to eat, what to feel, what to think. The fact that we recorded in Seattle was, was really cool as well because it got us out of LA and um, we had to focus. You know, just have a little bit more overdrive. You know, just a, a little bit, not not the buzzy kind, but right. more the growly kind. Gotcha. Terry Date is uh, very easy to work with. I've been a huge Terry Date fan for years. You know, when I found out we were working with him, I was just like ecstatic, a little bit scared because, you know, here's this guy who's been doing all these bands that I've loved for years. It didn't seem like, for him, like it was a job to him. It seemed like it's something he loves to do. I'm very pleased with the way the album has come out. For us, the name Sevastra is something very sacred, something very special, and something we hold very dear to ourselves sort of a story about uh, the agony of life and the sweet surrender to your own demons and then victory over them through your own self-destruction. It's a deliverance. Messiah. <laughs>